This is the city, Los Angeles, California. 700,000 of its citizens have their roots in different countries. Some are here in search of work, others for a chance to be free. Many have come not knowing why. There's something here for all of them. You can find foods of every nationality. At the farmer's market where produce is shipped in from many different lands. Or in Chinatown with oriental atmosphere and bean sprouts to match. For those who like it hot, there are 263 Spanish restaurants. There is also Alvera Street, an authentic mercado specializing in Mexican products. This is a city with a lot of different tastes. They don't always mix well. When they don't, I go to work. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. January 12th, it was cloudy in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary auto theft division. The boss is Captain Green. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. We were starting a new week with a new caseload. 15 residential burglaries. All of them were small. There was no pattern, no leads. We had to check them all out. Anybody got Howard Haven, 6941 Barrett Street, report taken last night? Yeah, that's one of ours. Mrs. Haven on two, Joe. All right, thanks. Miss Sergeant Friday, may I help you? Yes, Miss Haven. My partner and I... I see. Well, just as soon as we can. Yes, ma'am. Well, we already have that information. One double-barrel shotgun, one portable color TV, one eight-millimeter camera. Oh, I see. Well, now, if something else was stolen, we'll add it to the report. Uh-huh, well, what was in the box? I see. Yes, ma'am. We'll need an itemized list and some kind of description of the jewelry that was taken. Well, if it was insured, the company can help. Could you estimate the value? No, that's all right. We'll pick up the list. Yes, ma'am, it'll be sometime today. Thank you for calling. Forgot to report all the losses? Yeah, something about her jewelry box. She didn't report it to the field team last night. Well, now, most women check that the first thing when their house is burglarized, Yeah, right? they do, if that's all there is to it. What's the problem? I don't know. She said she'd tell us when we got there. a.m. We interviewed Mrs. Howard Haven. She told us the burglary had occurred somewhere between 7.30 and midnight while they were attending a hockey game at the Forum. There had been no vandalism and no sign of forcible entry. I'm sorry. The thief must have opened the back door. It's the only way he could have gotten in. Is that right? Well, the chain was on the front door. All the windows have safety catches. I just wish I knew how he got that back door open. Wouldn't be difficult for an experienced burglar. Or for somebody who has a key. I hate to say this, Sergeant, and I'm not making accusations, but, well, we do have a spare key hidden out back of the house. Now, I don't think any burglar would ever find it unless he saw one of us putting it there. You suspect anyone? No, I don't. I'd hate to think a neighbor would spy on us, but, well, there have been a lot of changes around here. I, I hardly know anybody on the street anymore. I'll check that back door. Right. You won't find any scratches or splintered wood. The officers who were here last night checked it, and so did my husband. Now, Howard says it was definitely someone who knew his way around. How do you mean? Well, the thief took just about everything of value in the house small enough to carry. Isn't it obvious he knew right where to look? No, not necessarily, Miss Haven. Most people keep their valuables in pretty much the same places, and burglars seem to know them all. Your partner must have locked himself out. Just a minute, Miss Haven. Come on in, Bill. But it's locked. You found the key. No, ma'am, I used a shim. A what? A plastic card. If you can get it past the edge of the door, you can push the catch back. Any experienced burglar could open that door with no strain. You ought to have a deadbolt lock installed. I see. Well, in a way, I'm relieved. How's that? I mean that it wasn't a neighbor. Well, we can't rule that out entirely, Mrs. Haven. Oh? Even a burglar is somebody's neighbor. 
I made out the list you asked for. Mostly antique pieces and not terribly valuable, except to me. What are the chances of ever getting it back? I'll be honest with you, Mrs. Haven, not too good. Oh, I love those old pieces. And you never missed them till this morning? Well, of course I did. It's the first thing I looked for. How is it you didn't report that to the officers last night? Well, I didn't want to tell about the money. $380. I had it hidden in the jewelry box. There's a lift-out tray for rings and small pieces, and the money was under that. It was hidden, you understand. My husband doesn't know about it. It was money I'd saved for emergencies. Oh, if Howard should find out, he'll be furious. He'll know right away why I had it. How's that? Well, you see, we have two children. <laughs> well, they are children, of course. Bonnie's 22, lives in Santa Ana. Ross is three years younger. He's going to college in the Valley and shares an apartment with another student. Yes, ma'am. Bonnie's been married less than a year, and, well, she's not a very good manager yet, what 22-year-old is. And, well, Ross needs a little help occasionally, too. Oh, not very much. A few dollars now and then to tide him over to his next allowance. Well, Howard doesn't understand times have changed. He says he didn't have an allowance. He worked his way through school. And when he got married, he supported his wife without help from his in-laws. Well, that's true, of course, but, well, times have changed, haven't they? Yes, ma'am. I suppose there's not much hope of getting the money back, either. Less than the other things, I'm afraid, Miss Haven. Less? Yes, ma'am. The thief will have to find some place to unload that jewelry. Yes. The money he can pass anywhere. <laughs> Ten twenty a.m., we went back to the office and checked with pawn shop detail. In Los Angeles, all pawn shops are required to file daily reports on every article pawned or sold. The 822 form contains the customer's name and address and a general description of him. Further, the customer must present some kind of identification, and this is also noted on the 822. We showed the crime report to a pawn shop officer, Earl Sloan, and he recorded the serial numbers of the shotgun and the television set. If either of those items were pawned or sold anywhere in the city, we would be notified immediately. If they showed up elsewhere in California, we would get a kickback from the property division of CII up in Sacramento. 11 a.m., we talked to Tom Romero in SID. He had just returned from the Haven House where he dusted for latent prints. He found nothing. Four days passed, nothing new turned up in the Haven case. Friday, January 16th, Cheryl Randall, the clerk in pawn shop detail, had something for us. This just came through. I thought you'd like to have a look at it. What do you got? It's an 822 on a Remington 12-gauge shotgun. Looks good for the Haven burglary. Yeah, the serial number checks. What's the name? Albert Maddox, 211 East Wilbur. He showed a driver's license for ID. Male Caucasian, 5'11", 165 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes, 28 years old. I'll run him through R&I. Pawned at 2,091. I looked it up. It's the Frontier Loan Company on Main Street. And the gun will be there if we need it? Officer Sloan put a hold on it. Good. Thanks very much for your help. I'll pass that along. Keep some for yourself. Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that'll do it. Thanks. They got a package on Albert Maddox. Yeah? Narcotics, nine arrests for pushing, and he's got one big customer. And who's that? Himself. He's an addict. Twelve thirty p.m. Bill and I drove over to the address on East Wilbur Street to interview Albert Maddox. He wasn't there. Neither was the address. A neighbor told us the house had recently been sold and moved to another lot. He didn't know where, and he didn't know where Albert Maddox had gone. One o five p.m. We went back to Parker Center and talked to Sergeant John Odom in Narcotics Division, who had handled Albert Maddox in the past. He's been pretty quiet lately. Haven't seen him for a couple of months. You guys are working burglary, aren't you? That's right, John. Well, I'm a little surprised, Joe. Maddox always appeared to be able to support his habit by selling to other users. Yeah, maybe he's shooting all his profits. Yeah, could be. John, you have any idea where we can locate him? I got his address here somewhere. Yeah, 211 East Wilbur Street. No, afraid not. What's the matter, Joe? Well, we just got back from there. What is the last good one we have? It's NG now. That's a vacant lot. What about his contacts? You might try Henry Lipsom. We think he's running a shooting gallery in a pad just off Union Street. Been keeping an eye on him. Now, we don't want to step on any of your lines, but how are you fixed for time, pal? My partner's in court. I've got all his paperwork to do. Yes. So if you want me to come along, you'll have to ask me. Henry Lipsom, the man we hoped would give us a lead on Albert Maddox, was a heroin addict. We hoped he would cooperate with us. 1.40 p.m. Like to talk to you. Come on in. Boy, 
do you want, Odom? He got no right to come busting in here. Nobody busted in. We were invited, right? You're narcs. I didn't know, Henry. I thought it was a connection. Shut up. Just shut up. We're clean. Oh, very clean. You're on the nod. This one is stoned. What about you? Never touch it. Let's see some identification. Take it out of your wallet. College student, 18 years old. Found this one in the bedroom. He's out of it. I'll put in a call for a black and white. Okay, stand the corner there, fella. Henry, this is Sergeant Friday. He'd like you to talk to him. Is he going to do me any good? No deal, Henry. You know that. We'll inform your probation officer if you cooperate. What do you want? Albert Maddox. Maddox? Maddox. Uh... Oh, he moved. Yeah, we know that. Where to? Uh, Pasadena, I think. Yeah, it's Pasadena. You got an address? Uh, got one written down here someplace. Yeah. Yeah. This ain't good? Sure is. He gave me that address on the phone today. You'll find in there. That's not the black and white. He's not going anywhere. I'm right in, Maddox. You Henry's connection, are you? No, sir, not me. I'm out of the business. You're not dealing? How do you pay for your hobby? I haven't popped in three months. I'm all the way out. I'm clean. You'll have to be searched anyway. You want to handle that, Joe? You can talk to him at the same time. I've never seen you guys before, and I know every narc in town. Is that right? Yeah. What are you guys working? Burglary. Burglary? You must be freaking out. Burglary ain't my bag. What is your bag? Like I told Odom. I'm straight now. Got a job? I'm looking around. How do you pay the rent? I don't make it prowling houses. How'd you know it was a house? What house? Where? Barrett Street. I don't know where that is. Well, now, do you think you could find the Frontier Loan Company? What is that, a pawn shop? That's right. I never heard of it in my life. Well, now, we've got a witness who says you have. Don't use him. He's wrong. Tell me what's wrong with this description. 5'11", 165 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes, 28 years old. Anything that doesn't check out? It checks out for a lot of people. A million guys fit that. But you're the only one with the right name and address. You can get that out of the phone book. That guy at the pawn shop's wrong, I tell you. He made a mistake. We'll let him tell us that after he looks at your picture. <laughs> Among his personal effects, Albert Maddox had a temporary California driver's license. He was not carrying any narcotics on his person, nor was any found in his car. Either he was not the connection the shooters had been waiting for, or he had hidden the stuff before coming in. The other four suspects were arrested and taken down to Parker Center. Albert Maddox was taken downtown and booked as an accessory to burglary. 3.15 p.m. We took Maddox's mugshot, mixed in with several other suspects, and met with the pawnbroker at the Frontier Loan Company. This guy's supposed to be in this group, is he? You tell us. Uh, it looks like you made a mistake. You sure? You haven't got the right one here, not in this bunch. One of these pictures is a man by the name of Albert Maddox. He lived at 211 East Wilbur Street. That's the information on your 822. Because that's the name he gave me, the other man. None of these look anything like him. Well, now, according to your 822, you have a man described as 5'11", 165 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes, 28 years old. Now, how does the other man's description stack up against this one? He was taller, younger, darker. I recall he wore glasses. What color were his eyes? Dark, I think. Yeah, dark. Well, then tell me something. Why did you write it up this way? Because that's what it said on his driver's license. OK, so I made a mistake. I just copied it down instead of looking him over. But I was busy at the time. I had a store full of customers waiting. Well, did you ask for any other identification besides that temporary driver's license? Yeah, but he told me that's all he had on him. A lot of good that did, huh? Yes, sir, that's right. No picture on it. p.m. we returned to Parker Center and interrogated Albert Maddox for an hour without learning anything new. By now we were satisfied he was not a suspect. At the same time we were equally certain he could identify the guilty person. You let somebody use your driver's license. I didn't let him use it. He just helped himself. That's what he did. And put it back when he was finished. Must have. I've still got it. And you didn't see him do it. I didn't even know about Tell it. Tell me something, Maddox. Where do you keep your driver's license? In my billfold, like everybody else. Who had the opportunity to get into your billfold? At what time? Any time. Could have been Monday night. I had some people in a little party, you know. Who was there? A lot of people. I don't know who I was there. They kept floating in and out all evening. Were you strung out? High enough. I don't remember who was there. A little earlier, you told us you hadn't been popping for three months. So I got one wrong. Flunked me. Who set you up? What do you mean, set me up? Just that. You've been had, Albert. Must have been one of your friends. If that's the case, it wasn't done on purpose. Well, no, that's how it looks, doesn't it? Who'd want to do that to you? 
Somebody's got it in for you, fella. Now, you ought to be able to figure out who. Forget it. Would you just forget it? Nobody did nothing to nobody. Is that right? Sure. Look around you, fella. What? You're in here. He's out on the street. Pete, Don, how busy are you? What do you need? 30 minutes. That we can spare. We got a pusher name of Albert Maddox. He's clean for us. Somebody used his ID to hock stolen property. Maddox can tell us who, but he won't share it. When's he gonna hit the street, Joe? Right now. In case he turns around, there can't be anybody there he knows. You think he'll head for the barn? It's worth a try. Five twenty p.m. Officer Pete Stedman reported that Maddox had made a call from the first phone booth he came to. Then he had hailed a taxi. 5.45 p.m., the radio dispatcher relayed another message to us. The taxi had taken Maddox back to Union Street, where he had picked up his car. He was now driving north on the Golden State Freeway. 6.05 p.m. 6.15 p.m., at last report, Maddox had entered a motel room in Glendale. Cabin 5, Joe. I got a look at the register. It's occupied by a Tony Oliver. He's alone in there now. Right, thanks, Pete. What happened to Maddox? Oh, he stayed about 15 minutes, then he moved on. I just got a call from my partner. He tailed him back to his apartment in Pasadena, and he's waiting to hear from me. OK, tell him he can drop off and come back and pick you up. As far as we're concerned, with any luck, this will be the end of the line. Right. You need any backup? Place got a rear entrance? No, just the front door. We can handle it. Thanks, Pete. Open up. Police officers, invite us in. Let's talk about a burglary. Sure. All right, stand still. He's clean. You have an identification? No, sir. What's your name? Uh, Tony Oliver. Where do you live? Here. I haven't been in town long enough to get anything permanent. Where are you from? Back east. Can I have my glasses, please? Thank you. All right, you're under arrest, and I have to advise you of your rights. You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak with an attorney and to have the attorney present during questioning. If you so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you without charge before questioning. Now, do you understand each of these rights I've explained to you? Yeah, yeah, I understand. I, I know all that, Jazz. You've gotten me, and, and there's all the stuff I took. And if that isn't enough, there's that crud Maddox. I don't know why he had to think on me. He got in his licks. He, he belted me in the eye. You didn't do him any favor, you know. Well, it wasn't deliberate. I never tried to pawn anything before. I didn't know you had to show some identification. All I had on me was Albert's driver's license. How'd you get it? He loaned it to me. Well, he, he loaned me his car, but I don't have a license of my own, so I borrowed his. It was just good sense. I see. It's a temporary license. Albert's picture isn't on it. I figured if I got stopped by a cop, he'd never notice the difference. He would have noticed the description doesn't match, son. The guy in the pawn shop never spotted it. He's not a policeman. Did Maddox know what you were going to use the car for? to get some bread. He didn't care how I got it. Are you hooked, boy? Not exactly hooked, just sometimes I need a lift. How many jobs did you pull? Just the one. I drove around until I saw a house with no lights burning. All this stuff here didn't come from the same place. Who says? The owner gave us a list of what was missing. Some of these things aren't on it. I can't help that. You can't, huh? No, sir. If you've got some unsolved burglaries, don't try to hang them on me. All I did was one. Count them, one. One's all it takes, son. At Parker Center, the suspect admitted that he had found the $380 hidden in Mrs. Haven's jewelry box. He told us most of the money had gone to Albert Maddox to pay for narcotics previously obtained on credit. As for his identity, he refused to give us any information except that his name was Tony Oliver, his age was 21, and he was from somewhere back east. You spot something? I was just thinking. Burglar didn't have any trouble getting into that Haven place, now, did he? No, good professional entry. Uh -huh, and he didn't overlook much, not for a first job. Well, maybe this kid's had more experience than he's admitting to. Uh -huh. Maybe he knew where to look. Maybe. Miss Haven told us they had two children, didn't she? Yeah, a married daughter and a son in college. Well, now, we don't know where that daughter is, but 10 to 1, we got the son sitting right there. We telephoned Mr. and Mrs. Haven, and they agreed to come down and identify their property. 7.35 p.m. Sergeant Friday, this is my husband. Mr. Haven. I'm surprised to get your call, Sergeant. To be honest with you, I never expected to get anything back. Nothing at all. Looks like most of it's here. Well, what's missing? The shotgun. It was pawned. We have a hold on it. It'll be recovered. Oh, good. 
then everything's here. Yes, sir, and a little more. More? Well, either items you people didn't list are part of another burglary. Do you want to take a good close look now? Oh, I don't see anything here that isn't mine or my wife's. How about these golf clubs? Can you identify them? Well, there's no question about it. Those are my clubs. Well, they're not on the list. Oh, well, that's easy enough to explain. Yes, sir. Didn't know they were gone. Haven't played for quite a while. You a golfer, Sergeant? No, sir, I'm not. You'll identify everything here, then? You see anything that doesn't belong to us? No, it's all ours. That fellow nearly cleaned us out. He must be a real pro. He claims it's his first job. He's a user. He needed money to buy narcotics. Is that right? Well, there's a lot of that sort of thing going on these days. He doesn't by any chance to live in our neighborhood, does he? He won't tell us where he lives. Then I'll tell you something. This fellow's either a pro or he's been spying on us. The way he got into the house, the way he found everything of value, it's got to be somebody right in the neighborhood. There's a lot of weirdos moved in lately. Maybe you can identify him. Where is he? I'll do my best. Right over there, Mr. Haven. Ross! Sergeant, that's our son. Yes, ma'am. Are you telling us he did it? He burglarized his own home? Ross, did you do that? No, it's not true. It can't be. Oh, don't be a fool, Dorothy. It's right there in front of you. You've been wondering why his grades were falling off lately. Now you know your son's a dope addict. Our son. Oh, don't include me in that. I don't want any part of him. Oh, Ross, how could you do it? Well, you see, he can't even look at you. And after all we've done for him, we gave you everything, Ross. A good home, money, clothes, an education, more than most kids have. And what do we get back? A thief, a common thief. All right, we're through. Do you understand that? As far as I'm concerned, you're just another criminal. The law can take its course. Come on, Dorothy. The police can handle this. Just a minute, Mr. Haven. Won't you people sit down, please? Come on. What do you want me to do? You want me to prosecute? I'll do that, too. Mr. Haven, is that what you'd do if your boy had cancer? What do you mean by that? He's sick. He needs medical help. Well, it's not like he caught a cold or something. He did it all to himself. That's right, he did. He started on marijuana, maybe for kicks, maybe for a lift, we don't know. Then he got on to pills. Now he's addicted to heroin. His habit's so bad he had to steal to support it. He's a thieving drug addict. That's all he is, and you know it. He's a very sick boy, Mr. Haven, and he needs help. Isn't it too late for that? No, ma'am. We're going to petition to have him committed under the California Civil Addict Program. You mean he can be cured? Yes, sir. There's a chance. But he'll need your help. All you can give him. I don't know what we can do for him that we haven't done. You can start out by wanting to help. All right. Suppose we do want to. What then? Then you'll reinstate him. That's what? Your son. These officers are going to ask the court to send you to a hospital. They won't have to do that. Why not? I'll volunteer for it. Uh, All right, son. All right. you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On February 6th, a hearing was held in Department 95, Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that hearing. It was the opinion of two medical doctors and the court that the suspect was addicted to narcotics and in need of treatment.